g- give us an idea of how we can manage this confirmation bias stuff. We know what it is now, mm-hmm. and how best we can can we manage it. Well, I, I usually would say I would say that there's we need to stick to this notion of the tyranny of automaticity, but I might I might attenuate that and say that you know it's not a tyranny, but it's a necessity. Uh, from an evolutionary biological perspective, we're not supposed to be having big thoughts all the time. That would be completely wasteful, and we wouldn't be able to enjoy our Rice Krispies. We wouldn't be. We, we would literally be. We would be. We would have a relationship with the world that I don't think would be good for us or the world. So I'm not necessarily knocking confirmation bias, at least uh, um, in that sense. What I think we need to think about is how can we maintain the possibility and openness that when we are in the presence of something that generates some sort of emotional storm that causes some disequilibrium, can we be honest honest enough with ourselves to to be able to stay in that space long enough to dance with it? The possibility of giving it a name. When I thought about the fact that Trump got elected as opposed to saying I'm going to move to Canada or, you know, everybody around me is idiots, I needed to think to myself, wait a minute, right now I'm really upset, I'm scared, this is not what I expected, but what if it forces me to have to think about the world that I live in differently? And maybe I live in a bubble. Maybe I've got this middle class existence, Um, I am part of a professional middle class. It keeps me from thinking about other folks who are in different places, And but I would need to be able to have... I would allow myself the impact and that emotional impact and I would have to be able to dance with it. So I think that not that confirmation bias needs to be taken away, or at least when we're thinking about it globally, but we need to be more honest and aware of what we're experiencing and to try to be able to do something with those things. There are moments in the day when we really should have thoughts. Probably very few moments in the day. Maybe there are very few moments in the week that require thoughts in the way Beyond was describing them. Mm-hmm. But they do, they do come. They do happen. Yes. I mean, uh, there, there is this stream of consciousness that seems to be always on. I mean, uh, that, that's why it may, may be the, the, the sort of new uh, discovery of meditation and mm-hmm. mindfulness and those kind of practices or sort of helping us get away from that <coughs> continuous thought process because I think that the thoughts uh, you can ruminate you can go over you're, you're and over probably, and around and around in OCD and all of those good things with it there have been some real criticism of mindfulness and I think mindfulness can be very important in making us more attuned to what moves inside us and to be more respectful of the things we feel and to allow certain things to move through us if we don't need but mindfulness actually if we're not careful can really stand in the way of accommodation because um Zizek, who I've talked about before, talks mm-hmm. about the you know the Western Buddhism, and if you notice, there are all these class, all these trying to they're teaching mindfulness at work, and these corporations are having mindfulness right. and all that sort of right. stuff. And it's the idea new, is, as opposed thing. to thinking about you know like I don't know, I don't think they have it at Walmart. Or I'm not knocking Walmart, but let's use that as an example. All right, yeah. So they're having all these mindful. You know, we're teaching our, our employees to meditate so they can. Well, maybe their reason they're upset is because there's something that needs to be changed, and you're just teaching them how to be able to come with how to to giving them a um, a stiff drink or a sedative in a way to be able to stay with it. So, suffering accommodation requires suffering, and so mindfulness in the service of not having to think or change the world around you might actually be an evil thing. Okay. Okay. So, in some ways, we need to, to uh, uh, be uh, a, a participant in that, uh, not just an observer, as we talked about here. All right, that's been very cool. <laughs>